All right, and just so everybody knows, we, are, we, we will be recording the session as well. So if anybody wants a copy of it to send out to others, uh, you'll be able to do so. All right, so today we're going to be talking about ACA management. The title for today's webinar is Tools to Simplify ACA Management and Compliance. All right, and we're going to be taking you through uh, kind of a high, real high-level overview of the ACA and some of the main um, some of the main areas that we're going to focus in on are really centered around the reporting requirements. Uh, so obviously, we could probably schedule a a, a two-week webinar, eight hours a day, to fully talk about all the different areas of ACA and um, you know how it can impact various types of businesses. Um, but we're going to try and be a little bit more laser focused on the reporting requirements centered around the ACA. Let me introduce our host today, uh, Kristen. Kristen Justice is going to be taking us through a uh, kind of an overview on the ACA rules and also is going to be taking you to through an actual look of the system so you'll be able to see what the Beyond Pays solution looks like as it relates to the ACA manager. All right, and whether you choose to move forward with Beyond Pay or not, this is an informative um, this really is an informative presentation, so you know if you don't choose Beyond Pay, you're going to need to choose something <laughs> that works for you for for tracking the ECA management, and we hope you find it useful. Um, so with that, Kristen, uh, please take over. Um, you're in good hands. All right. Thank you so much for the introduction, Jonathan, and, and thank you everyone for taking time out of your busy schedules to join us here for the next 25 or 30 minutes today. We're thrilled to have you on, and um, we know obviously you're thrilled to know all about the ACA. Um, definitely a little bit of sarcasm in there. The Affordable Care Act is nothing that anyone is just jumping for joy of excitement over, but we're trying to do everything we can to make sure to bring you a solution to help you with that. And at the end of the day, we just want to make sure that all companies out there are educated on what they should be doing to have um, compliance to be at the forefront of the Affordable Care Act and to not be fearful of what it is and what it means. So um, we're going to go ahead and go through a few slides of this PowerPoint and I'm going to talk very specifically to the Affordable Care Act and the rules around it. We're going to go over ACA deadlines. Um, so I'm going to call the Affordable Care Act as ACA for the purposes of the demo. So ACA deadlines, we're going to take you through step-by-step -step process of achieving Affordable Care Act compliance. We're then going to shift over how HR technology can help you and then show you specifically the Beyond Pay HR technology. Uh, then I'll flop it back over to Jonathan and he's going to discuss measurement and stability periods, and then we're going to open it up for a Q&A session. So if you have questions throughout the demo, feel free to go ahead and throw them in the chat box over there on the, on the right-hand side of your screen. And don't think we're ignoring you. Like Jonathan said, we're just going to hold those questions till the end so that we can utilize the full 25 minutes um, really talking about the Affordable Care Act and showing you our solution. So um, the next slide, we're going to be looking at those ACA deadlines. And so what you're, well, this slide first, I forgot about this one. If you want to jump on our blog, you will be able to follow great updates on the Affordable Care Act and other HR topics. So you can check us out um, on beyondpay.com slash blog. So here are those deadlines. Um, so 50 to 99 employees. January 1st, 2015, you have to begin reporting on employees and coverage. So um, that is actually the correct numbers. It started this year, the beginning of this year. So don't fret. We are able to pull in your historical data and get it into the system. Systems that you have that look back period available. So just keep that in mind that you do need to have the full year that you're looking back at for groups of 50 or more. Okay, so as of now, the IRS is not requiring for groups of 49 or less to report and to track, um, but nationally we're encouraging all groups to begin taking these precautions because this could all change in 2016. Okay, so as of January 1st, 2016, you must be offering affordable health care coverage to those full time employees. So FTE just means full time employees in regards to the Affordable Care Act. Uh, January 1st, 2015, for 100 plus, you have to report information on your company's insurance plans and you have to offer coverage to 70% of your full time employees. And 2016 and beyond, you have to continue to offer coverage to 95% of your full-time employees, okay? So this next slide we're going to go on to is going to show you those four steps that are going to help you achieve ACA compliance. So step one is track variable hour employees. 
track their hours. So while the ACA is ever so confusing and there's so many pieces to it, we've managed to bring it down to four steps to help you gain confidence in understanding what the Affordable Care Act is and how you can be compliant with it. So you have to be tracking those variable hour employees, okay? You need to know when they reach the cusp of hours. Work to ensure that you are then offering them the affordable minimum value health care coverage, not just any health care coverage, and that moves into step two, ensuring that affordable health care coverage is offered, which is the um, no more than 9.5% of the employee's household income, okay? A lot of you may be working with a health benefit broker to help you achieve um, offering the, the correct health offerings to your clients. So we do partner with brokers. We do not offer health benefits. So we will work with your broker to make sure that um, we have this information and, and you're doing everything you need to, to to be compliant with the Affordable Care Act. Step three is ensure visibility into the historical data. So again, you needed to be tracking time on all your your employees for 2015. So obviously we are three quarters of the way through the year. Hard to believe we're almost into September. And so you need to have a system in place where you can easily view that historical data to help you complete the 1084 and 1085 C forms. And in case you get audited, because the IRS has hired over 16,000 auditors for 26 to ensure that companies are taking into account the ACA regulations that they've been enforcing. Okay, and then again, completing those 1084 and 1085 C forms that are required to be filed in 2016. All right, so this next slide you're seeing is how can HR technology help you? So we just went over a lot of information and we quickly discussed ways that that you could be compliant with the ACA, but now how do you obtain compliance or how do you ensure that what you're doing is what you need to be doing to not be concerned about an audit, to master the Affordable Care Act? So there are five things that are very important when it comes to HR technology and how it can help you. And the first one's going to be that reporting. So the 1094 and 25 c forms, you can go out to irs.gov and you can see those forms. But who's completing those forms? A lot of us are doing everything we can in a day to get our current tasks done. So how are you going to make time to complete these forms on top of everything else that you're already doing? With the technology I'm going to be showing you today, the Beyond Pay HR technology, you can actually have these forms auto-populate and you'll be able to file them electronically. So it's eliminating that human error that could happen from manually filling out those forms and it's going to eliminate all the time that it would take to fill out each one for every employee. Step two is those variable hour tracking. So we talked about that and we're going to talk more in depth about ways you can collect time on your employees, but you have to be tracking their time in more than just a spreadsheet because the IRS is going to come in and they're going to make sure that you are offering benefits those employees that have become an FTE, a full-time employee. Benefit enrollment. You need to make sure that you have electronic enrollment offered to your employees because the time that it may take you to offer the benefits and have them enroll manually um, may be one of those things where you've reached the cusp of their open enrollment period after they become an FTE. So you're going to want to be able to quickly open a virtual or electronic enrollment option for them so that way it just makes that process a breeze. Step four is that look back visibility. Again, you need to be able to see that historical data for 2015 and I'm going to show you how we can do that in the Beyond Pay HR technology. And then five is you want everything to be on one interface. If you're having to do all these pieces separately and then tell one system to tell another system to communicate, it's just going to make life so much harder and we understand that companies are already at their max with the amount of work that they're having to do to manage their workforce today so we can help you to streamline those processes because everything's going to communicate seamlessly on one interface. So from here I want to go ahead and jump over and show you the technology itself. It's really exciting to be able to show you ways that we can help. So I'm going to share my screen. Let me make sure I share the right one. All right, so right now you should be seeing the login screen for the Beyond Pay 2.0 HR technology platform. So what you're seeing here is where every employee in the company would log in, okay? So what we do is we take this technology and we make it look like your own and we configure it specifically to each employee in the company. So naturally, a director of HR is going to have more access to employee information than a part-time employee would. So we configure it specifically based on each employee and their role. Um, but for demo purposes, we're really just going to hone in on the Affordable Care Act component. And so I'm just going to go ahead and jump right into the view of a director of HR. So she's just going to simply put her first letter of her first name or full name and then her password and log in. 
Now we're going to change the system to look like your own. So what you're seeing here is it's splashed with Beyond Pay and our coloring, but we're going to make it look like yours because we want you and your employees to be excited about this new technology that you get to utilize. And so it's truly going to look like your own coloring, logos, and verbiage. Now the ACA component is going to work best when you're utilizing either time and labor management, payroll, or all three modules, which is time and labor management, human resources, and payroll. Okay, so this Affordable Care Act component is not one that's standing on its own because it does need information to fill itself out. One of the first pieces of information that is going to work cohesively with the Affordable Care Act component is the ability to select health benefits right here in the system. Now, open enrollment lies within the human resources module. So there are three modules in our cloud-based one interface platform. There's human resources, time and labor management, and payroll. And then the ACA component works cohesively with those. So open enrollment is a very important piece, obviously, of the, for, of the Affordable Care Act because if an employee reaches the full-time employee status with the ACA at some point in that, which Jonathan will talk more about, the administrative and stability periods, um, but you're going to have to offer those health benefits. And so this will open up for that employee to go in and to make the selection for them, their spouse, or their family to ensure that they are offered the right benefits at the right time and they can quickly enroll. So just a quick example here, we pull in the medical, dental life, all that information, we get it from you or your health benefit broker and we configure it specifically to your company. So you can just see we have Aetna HMO and PPO and I can compare two options side by side. Just to show you what this looks like. So an employee, employee can easily make the election and they can even do it from the comfort of their own home because the system is cloud-based, so that means we can access it from anywhere in the world with the internet connection, and it is safe and secure, so you can um, rest easily knowing that your information is secure. So here an employee can view two options side by side, and then they can easily just make their selection, and they can move forward. Now we're going to change the tabs based on your offerings. So if you're offering a 401k, we can put that tab in there so the employees can contribute. We can also do FSA, COBRA administration, HRA, and HSA. And beyond pay, we actually do offer uh, the value-added benefit, pre-tax benefit services. So if you all need to talk further about FSA or COBRA administration, we can bundle that in here also, which is a really nice added feature because a lot of people are offering that now. And in New York, it is required for groups over 20 to be offering FSA transit for 2016. Okay, so as soon as the employee gets done electing their benefits, the director of HR is going to get an email notification saying this employee has elected their benefits. At that point, you can either approve or reject their elections, and we can even set up an EDI to automatically get the information to the carrier if you're a group of over about 150 employees. If you are a small to mid-sized group, the carriers typically don't accept, accept the direct feed. No worries. We're able to provide you with the enrollment information, and you can get that to the carrier so that they can upload it via CSV or report and enroll the employees in their offerings of their, their choosing. So lots of options there to be able to give those employees um, easy access to electing for health benefits. Next piece is the timesheets, so time collection. The Affordable Care Act is revolving around time collection. Who's a part-time employee? Who's a full-time employee? So with the Beyond Pay platform, with HR technology, you're going to have the ability to track every minute that your employees are working. So an example is that we have hard clocks that you can mount on the wall. So if you have a high volume of part-time employees that are coming into the same location each day, we can actually mount a hard clock into the, a common area and the employees can either scan their finger, that's called a biometric scanner, can scan their badge, or they can insert, just input a series of numbers that'll clock them in or clock them out. That's communicating with this system that you're seeing here. It's all one system, one interface. We can also have employees clocking in and out from the mobile app because we know everybody has their phone tied to their hip these days. You may not always have your computer with you. So you're going to be able to have all this functionality with the mobile app and you can even see the exact GPS coordinates of an employee when they clock in or clock out to make sure they're at the job site and not at Starbucks grabbing a cup of coffee. So really awesome technology and you can also have employees clock in and out from their dashboard. So if they're sitting at their desk and um, they spend most of their day at a desk in the office, they can clock in and out from their dashboard. So lots of options there to collect time. You just want to make sure that you have a, a, a time system in place to help you accurately really track that time because again the auditors have been hired, the IRS is ready to go out there and make sure that all full-time employees are being offered the right health care coverage, okay?
So moving from there, so we went over the open enrollment piece for HR. We went over the time sheets and time collection methods, which lies within time and labor management. Now the ACA component. You can see it right here on the HR director's dashboard, right? So you see the cumulative total of hours worked by each employee for each month. Okay, now if I click on the cumulative total, I'm going to see each individual employee's cumulative total of hours worked within that month. I can take this report and I can filter it as much as I want. I can group it if I want to. Let's say I want to get rid of username. I'm going to click the X. I'm going to group by name. So lots of functionality in getting this to be in the look that you want it to be in. And then I'm going to go in and I'm actually going to look at one employee specifically, Josh Bronson. I pick on him a lot. So here we can actually look back at the historical data. So this is where I was saying that we're going to bring in your historical data and make sure that it's all here and visible in case of an audit. Okay? This is also going to help to complete the 1084 and 25 c forms that are required for 2016. So we can see the cumulative total of hours worked by Josh Bronson in each month in 2015. And then this is even going to tell us whether or not he is reaching the ACA status of full-time or his ACA status is part-time. It's going to talk all about the initial and standard measurement stability administrative months, which Jonathan is going to touch on here in just a bit. And then it's also going to let us know whether or not the affordable plan and minimum value plan is offered. Okay, so there's all those components of the Affordable Care Act that need to be tracked. Now this is also going to alert us if an employee is approaching the ACA status of full time and then that way we can open enrollment for that employee so they can go in and elect their health benefits. Okay. Now the next piece is of course the 1094 and 1095 C. So I know I'm moving quick. The intention of today's webinar is really just to give you a high level overview of what the Affordable Care Act is and ways that HR technology can help you. So I'm going to show you the 1094 C form first. I'm just going to simply click add new and here's a 1094 C form. So you can go out to irs.gov and you can see this form, but the beauty in this is that because it is on our one interface cloud-based system, when I click populate form, it's going to instantly pull in the employer information. It's going to pull in that EIN and the employer address, all that information so that no one's having to manually input that info. Of course, I'm also going to be able to finalize this form virtually and file it virtually. Okay. Next form is the 1095C form. So this form houses the employee and the employer information, and the employee is required to receive this from the employer. So they have it for their file, okay? So you can see here that, again, 1095C, same as the one on irs.gov, but when I click populate form, all that information is going to automatically populate. So you can even see the employee social security number, that EIN for the employer is in there. That information is automatically coming in. So it's a helping to reduce that risk of someone manually keying in the information wrong because anytime there's manual entry, there's risk for human error. And everybody knows the IRS does not like any human errors on their form. So we want to make sure that we're doing these with utmost accuracy. And again, you can finalize this form virtually and you'll even have the ability to file them electronically. If you do want to download this and have it, a hard copy of it, you can always do that also. So keep in mind while we talk about keeping everything safe and secure in the cloud and keeping it green and electronic, you can always download it and you can print it if you'd like. You can even email it. So lots of functionality there with the HR technology. So I know I moved really quick. Uh, again, the intention was just to give you a high-level overview and just talk to you all specifically about ways that HR technology can help you with the Affordable Care Act so it's not so scary. And we'll definitely be following up with you more and really hope that you guys participate in the Q&A session. That way we kind of know what your thoughts are or any questions you have as we go. But at this point, I'm going to turn it back over to Jonathan and he's going to go over the measurement and stability periods that we talked about in regards to when, when to offer health benefits and, and what that looks like. So thank you guys for your time. Great. Thank you, Kristen. So let me grab control here. All right, you guys should be able to see my screen now. Okay, good. So the next thing we want to take a look at are measurement periods. All right, so um, this is always the, we're getting now into some of the fun stuff uh, when it comes to ACA. And um, we're just going to give a real brief overview of how measurement periods work. Um, and we're really going to have to work individually with people to really dive in and determine what's going to make the most sense. Uh, but this should give you a pretty good starting point. For 99% of cust for 99% of employers, um, it's going to be pretty straightforward. You're going to want to have a stability period. Okay, so this little this little area we have in this uh, light blue here, 
the stability period is almost always going to coincide with when your medical plan renewal date is, right? So um, if you're going to renew benefits on 1 1 2016, like we have in this example here, your stability period is probably going to be starting on 1 1 2016. Now, again, there are ways around this, and you can get fancy, and there might be some reasons, and you can get into some cerebral discussions about <laughs> what makes the most sense, but for most companies, uh, we're going to be coinciding your renewal date with whatever your stability period is. So backing out of the stability period, uh, let's talk about the measurement period. Okay, so the measurement period, the concept behind a measurement period is that the IRS wants to track when a employee is a full-time employee versus a part-time employee, right? So it sounds pretty straightforward. So the IRS has said, okay, uh, what we want companies to do, when you hire an employee, we want you to pay them benefits if they're a full-time employee, right? Straightforward, um, if you hire a full-time employee, we want you offering benefits for them, right? So the next question is, okay, well, I just hired this employee. Uh, I hired them part-time. They're going to be working 25, 26 hours, but they might kind of work 35 hours some weeks, and sometimes they're going to have to work overtime. They're going to work 50 hours. So how do I – are they full-time? Are they part-time? I don't know. So what the IRS came up with was to define a measurement period. So what they say is, okay, I want you to start calculating starting on, in this example, 12-1-2014 through 11-30-2015. You need to calculate all your hours that were worked, and if you average 130 hours or more in a given year, uh, you're now – considered a full-time employee. Okay, so if we calculate over this period, this measurement period, that you're over um, 130 hours, you now have an administrative period. So you have a point, you have a, a time period where you're able to determine whether somebody worked full-time or not. So whether somebody was a full-time or a part-time employee. So the, the IRS is giving you somewhere between 30 and 90 days typically um, a lot of times this is going to coincide with your open enrollment period. So you might have an open enrollment period of 30 days and your administrative period maybe is 60 days. So that gives you 30 days to do all your ACA calculations, 30 days to do all your open enrollment, uh, and then your renewal kicks in uh, from there. So this is kind of gives you a little bit of a visual graphical representation of what that measurement period, administrative period, and stability period looks like. Um, and almost always uh, the periods are going to be a 12-month measurement period. And your measurement period always has to equal your stability period, okay? So if your measurement period was 12 months, your stability period is 12 months. And again, and for most customers, most companies are going to elect to do a 12-month stability period. There are reasons and maybe some situations where you'd want to do a lesser stability period, and we're not going to really get into that for today's topic. So now, a complication comes in. What happens? You hire an employee in July. Or actually, let's even take that back. You hire an employee January 1st. Right? We don't know if they're full-time or part-time, so we're going to call them a variable hour employee. Right? We don't know how many hours they're going to work, so we're going to call them a variable hour employee. So on January 1, 2015, in this example, we hire them. And they work 135 hours. I have to think about the math in my head if that actually works out or not. So I better just set up myself in a scenario that doesn't work. But anyway, let's say they work 131 hours every single month starting January through 1130. All right? When we get the administrative period, and we do the calculation, the average is going to be less than 130 hours a month because that first month they didn't work at all. So the IRS is saying, okay, well, wait a second. Um, that means that they're not going to get benefits for this 11-month period, and then we're going to start counting again. So they're not. So if they started working on 1-1-2015, they're not going to get benefits until 1-1-2017. That's a problem. So the IRS introduced the concept of an initial measurement period. So basically, you take a copy of this measurement period, and this the start of that measurement period is the date of hire. So when that employee starts working, a counter starts, and we have to start tracking not only the company measurement period, but an initial measurement period for every new hire, right? So that's what our system is doing. That's what an HR system, um, even if you don't choose to go forward with beyond pay, that's what you need to be tracking now from now on. You need to track what the measurement period is for the company and what the initial measurement period is for the company, and you're going to need to have an administrative period for the company, and you're going to need to have an administrative period for every single employee for every single start date. Okay, so effectively, you're going to have an open enrollment period um, 12 months after you hire every single employee. Um, so again, there's a bigger burden on your HR department. There's a bigger burden on 
employee enrollments um, for brokers, there's a bigger burden on having to manage that. So we now need to have a solution to help with that. And again, that's what our technology solution is attempting um, to do. Um, so at this time, we're going to jump into some questions. So as you guys think, so thank you for uh, those that are submitting questions. Again, we're probably not going to get to all of them. So I, I apologize in advance if I don't answer your specific questions. We will follow up with you, though. Um, but please, please ask some questions, and then we're going to follow up. And here's some information on how to get in touch with us um, if you want to hear more and if you want to find out some more. Um, the other – okay, so I'm glad somebody asked this. So one of the main questions – let me jump back a couple slides here. So this is a really common question when it comes to um, – for ACA reporting when we talk about this 50 threshold, okay? And we can confuse ourselves a little bit with what FTE means, right? So depending on when we're talking about <laughs> different areas, FTE can mean different things. It can mean full-time employees. It can also mean full-time equivalents, all right? So one of the first things that you're gonna need to do to identify if a company is eligible and required to be what's called an applicable large employer, so ALE status, is based on their full-time equivalent status, okay? So if you have 100 part-time workers and uh, 40 full-time workers, there's a formula, and we're not going to go into the details of the specific formula. Um, you can go on irs.gov, and they have a nice little calculator and a nice little walkthrough of how that's calculated. But essentially, you take the average hours that somebody works, that employees work in a year, and you add that to the number of full-time employees to come up with a full-time equivalent employees. So if you're over 50, then these rules apply to you. Um, if you're over 100, then these rules down here apply to you. So this FTE right here is not full-time equivalents, it's full-time employees. So if you're over the 50 full-time equivalents, then you need to offer all your full-time employees coverage. Okay, so that's a bit of a misconception. It's a bit of a, a point of confusion that a lot of people have. Um, you do not need to offer health insurance to full-time equivalent employees. Full-time equivalents is only a calculation that's used to determine if you're subject to some of the penalties and some of the rules, the reporting deadlines and the reporting rules. Um, so if you have less than 50 employees um, and you're sure that you're not going to go over 50, for 2016, you're probably safe. Um, we don't know what's going to change. Uh, we're of the belief that that threshold is going to get lower and lower every year. Um, but anyway, that's a, that's a good question because that's a, a very common question. All right. So um, another question. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we're always going to get this question is how much does it cost? Um, uh, so I'd love to say it's free. Uh, another part of me would love to say it's a million dollars per person. Um, we're not going to, we're not going to go through pricing today though. Um, we asked to follow up with each of you individually. Um, so, so please reach out. We'll reach out to you guys as well, um, especially for those that you ask. Um, all right, so another question. Next question I want to answer. We've got, what modules do I have to have for the ACA module? All right, so Beyond Pay offers a full suite of products. Um, our four pillars, I guess you could say, our four primary products. We've got time and attendance. So think employee timesheets, think time clocks, think reporting, think how do I track my employee's time, how do I do time off requests, that's time and attendance. Number two, we've got HR, all right? So um, HR is online benefits enrollment, performance review management, recruiting and applicant tracking, asset management, employee onboarding, termination on uh, termination offboarding, um, lots, lots more compensation management and rattling off in my head. Uh, number three is payroll, so good old-fashioned payroll services, uh, full-service tax filing, printing and shipping checks, direct deposit, ACH transaction services, all that kind of stuff. And the fourth one is employee scheduling, so we have a dedicated scheduling product. They all stand on their own. They all work awesome together as a whole. Um, in order to utilize the ACA manager, which is a marketplace add-on, so it's, a, it's an additional product, in order to use ACA manager, you need either payroll or time and attendance, uh, or obviously a combination of all the products. So, uh, but you need to have either time and attendance or payroll in order to utilize the ACA manager, uh, because the critical component of the ACA manager, right? So the critical component of the ACA manager is tracking the hours worked. 
if we can't track the hours work through time attendance or payroll, you know, we really don't have a way to properly manage that and take care of that. Okay. All right, so another question. Yeah, so keep asking them. Again, I apologize if I can't answer all of them, but um, is Beyond Pay a PEO? Okay, so um, Beyond Pay is not a PEO, so uh, we are not an employee leasing company. Um, we are able to uh, very, very easily uh, break apart a PEO. So if you're with a PEO, uh, we have a number of brokers that we work with uh, that we can recommend to you. Uh, that work very well with us. If you have a broker, uh, we are very, very happy to work with them. Uh, we are a very broker-friendly company, and we want to work with your uh, broker and business partners. Um, but yeah, Beyond Pay is not a PEO. All right. All right, so actually, this is a good question. So this is one we've gotten asked before. Um, is Beyond Pay taking full responsibility for my compliance? And the answer is no, we are not taking full compliance. That would be cool. Um, <laughs> but unfortunately, the risks are uh, pretty large. Uh, the financial obligation, you ultimately as the employer are responsible for making sure that your reporting is accurate and correct. So we're going to be able to provide you with lots of reports and data and data points for you to spot check and, and make sure everything looks good. Um, you know, obviously we're going to work on you, making sure, work with you, making sure that the, um, you know, everything is set up properly and application is working properly. Uh, but ultimately, if you told us that you were offering um, uh, minim the minimum co coverage required and it turned out you weren't, you know, that's not something that we're taking responsibility for. If you told us that it was the, the proper coverage, you know, we're kind of taking that on faith. Um, if you needed help to determine whether you're having the proper coverage, happy to help you with that kind of stuff as well. But again, you as the employer are responsible for it. Keep in mind the penalties for not filing the, um, the 1094 and 1095 forms are very high, starting at $100 per form incorrectly filed. There is some transitional relief in the short term for 2016 for those companies that make uh, every a good faith effort to properly fill out the 1094 and 1085 forms. So there's some transitional relief. Um, but the forms, the errors start at $100 if you catch them within a month and go up to $200 and even $300 per form that's incorrectly filed. So it's important to definitely take this very seriously. Um, so anyway, if you guys are interested, if you'd like to sign up, um, if you'd like to hear more, please email salesbeyondpay.com. Uh, we'd love to take care of you. Take a look at beyondpay.com slash blog. Uh, give us a call, 800-277-9904. Um, you know, we're, we're anxious to work with you guys. We, we, we think we have an awesome solution that can help you and help and or help your customers. Um, we think we have a, a good thing going. Uh, we'd like you to be a part of it. So thank you very much for attending. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Uh, we're looking forward to getting in touch. Take care. Have a great day. Thank you.